All right, what we want to do is we, guys and gals, we have three profiles. Now, this is a projected trade we had in the room this morning. We said we're going to look for that control point, and then we're going to look at the low value area for, the, for a buy in gold. And this is an active trade that we have going on right now. If you can see, the projected level to buy was this level right there, low value area that we're bouncing off of right now. Now, what you want to do is you want to look at your trend filter first. The trend filter on the five minute, we look at the magenta MA, moving average. We don't use moving averages for support and resistance because they're worthless. I do like the 50 day moving average after the 20 crosses it on the first test if it's on market profile. Other than that, I really don't pay attention to them. I do like the angle of them though. I look at the magenta MA, the angle. If it's angled up, I'm buying market profile. If it's angled down, I'm selling market profile. Very, very simple. So we have three profiles in the room. We have three profiles. We have volume profile. That's been around since 1994. That blue, big blue, thick line, that's the most volume that's been traded in the market. Most volume that's been traded in any market you trade. I don't care if you trade the S&P 500, 400, NASDAQ futures, Dow minis, DAX. It don't matter what you trade. That's the most volume that's traded. creates natural support and resistance. It, when, once that level is up, which is a big, thick blue line, it, it, it make, it, what it does, it displays this big red line, which is high value volume, and low value volume, which is a big green level. So those are volume profiles. There's three of them. Low value green is all green. Control point is blue. High value is red. Very simple. What happens is, is we have this big red line, the big green line's volume. The thin line, you see these two thin lines right here, thin red and thin green right below here. That's developing profile. That's developing as the price ticks along. It's developing, showing you where major support resistance is. So where volume, the big thick lines, is looking at all the volume coming in the market, all the algorithms, the hedge funds, the prop firms. It's looking at all the professional amateur traders and it's spitting out major support resistance. The last one is these little dots. The green dots and red dots are the most important. That's low value and high value. That's price profile. That's been around since 1985. So those three profiles are what comprises our three profiles. Volume, price of the dots, volume's a big, thick green line, blue and red. Here's your dots. Green dots are the price profile. And then here, the thin line's developing profile. How do we put a limit order in to buy that low? What you can do if all three levels are stacked and trend is up, here's trends up. What you can do is put a limit order in this. I look at my lowest profile. My lowest profile was 77 and a half price profile. Look at the right margin. There's 77 and a half. The highest profile at the time was 77.60. So not much spread. It's a tick spread, right? So usually you split the difference. In other words, if it was 77.70 and 77.50 is my highest is 77.70. Lowest is 77.50. I'd split the difference and put a limit order at 77.60. So if they're one tick within, within each other, I'll just take the highest one. So I'd make sure I get a fill. So your limit order in there, you got filled at 1277.60. You got as low as 1277.50. All right. Well, your first push was all the way up to 79.40. So you got filled at 77.60. You can see the control point stopped at the exact, it stopped at the exact tick on my developing and price profile. Then it stopped at the exact tick on the control point. That happened this morning over here on that limit long. That's how you can do a limit order. You can actually limit it at 77.60 fill. You can put a sell 50% on the first push, the first 10 ticks. And the first 10 ticks was 77.60 plus 10 would be 78.60. 78.60, you sell 50% of your position, and then you try to get up to 81 and a half. All right, you can sell more right at the control point if you want at 79.30. Now, if you're trying to sell more, you can put a limit order in to sell. If I'm at if I'm at the control point, is at 79.50 or 79.40, you want to put a limit in at 79.30 to sell more contracts. So that's how you can do limit orders in with the system. You can put limit orders in on brick walls with overall trend retracements. It happens all the time. You're going to see it weekly on any market you trade. I don't care what market you look at. You trade copper, the same thing. You trade soybeans, corn, 
NASDAQ futures, you trade Dow minis, it doesn't matter, you trade the Russell 2000, it's the same exact thing. When you see these levels stacked in a couple of ticks, now that's pretty tight right there, 75 and a half to 76. That's beautiful, that's called a brick wall by the way. We call that a brick wall when all three profile, profiles stack right here. Just like this is a brick wall up here. I got three profiles that are stacking right within a couple of ticks of each other. So let's just say that we're in a downtrend here, right? And I want to sell a limit order between 80, the lowest is 8080, the highest is 8140. I take 8140 at the top up here, I take the lowest of 8080. You got a six tick spread, right? So you add it from the low if you sell, you take eight tick at three ticks plus eight, you're at 1281.10. So if we're in a hard downtrend, your sell limit on this side would be 1281.10. Now how do you how do you do your stop loss? Now here's the beauty of this. You can get in these trades that potentially could be six, seven, eight hundred dollar trades with risk in fifty dollars. How do you do it? Well, if this is a brick wall and I'm long right there at 77.60. So you're long at 77.60 down here on the brick with the trend up. You should put a hard stop right away at 13 ticks. Don't risk more than 130 bucks. In fact, you should, if you're doing brick walls, you need to do 10 tick stops. 10 ticks only risk 100 bucks per one contract. And what you can do on a brick wall is this. If you're risking 100 bucks when you first get in it, you can lower your stop by doing this. I look at my Renko bar, my Sim Renko bar, and once it closes a green bar over here, you can lower your 10 tick stop to two ticks below the swing low. So my entry was 77.60. I got a green reversal bar, so I can lower my stop two ticks below that swing low. The swing low is 77.5. Your new stop is now 77.30. So now I got a stop loss of 77.30, and I'm long at 77.60. I got a three tick stop loss. So now I got a three tick stop loss on a potential four, five, six, seven hundred dollar trade. You're risking 30 bucks to try to make 400, 500, 600 bucks. Even on this last trade, you're filled 7760 and you got 7930. So you can see, even on that last push, that $150 push per one contract, you risk 30 bucks. So you can see how you can have five, six, seven reward to risk ratios on trading brick walls. Brick walls when they're stacked. And that's how I like to do it. Okay?